Yo, yo, my man, what up with it? What's happening, dude? Nothing much, man. You know me, man. Relaxing, man. Chilling. You thought you you was going to train this morning or what? Oh, yeah, I'm going to train. I ain't done today yet. I just, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's happening with you, man? You gloating over the wind or what? You say what? I say, is you gloating over the wind or what? You perform yeah, pretty good. Sure, but... sure. yeah, yeah, I'm still happy about the wind, but it's just the beginning, you know? Yeah. That, uh, that press guy was uh, very experienced, man. For sure, for sure. Where you well, at? Well, I made him look like a rookie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I came out the. We had got out the ring. I I, I got to catch it. I think from like two on. How many rounds it went? It went uh five. I think five. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you heard him earlier in that. One. That uh. I think Prescott got like what fifty fights down there. Yeah, he like yeah, yeah, fifty fights. I remembered him from uh, I remembered him from ruining the old uh, Amir Khan. Oh yeah, he knocked out Amir Khan. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, that. he was the first one to uh, uh, expose them whiskers. What up? Uh, oh, yeah. So you went right back in the gym, bro? What? Oh yeah, I'm back in the gym already. No days off. I know that's right. I gave uh, I gave uh, Q the week off, but he was running the third day. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was out ready on the treadmill, man. That's how I be, man. What uh? So you from St. Louis, bro? I'm from St. Louis. How long you been in Texas? Like almost six years now. You like it down there, or what? I love it. I love I love the South better than my city. You know, my city. I love my city too, but. I don't know it's something about Houston though that I just love, you know. Yeah, me too, man. I've been there about twenty years now, and I love it. Oh yeah. That, uh, <clears throat> my wife was born in in Kansas, but she did a high school and stuff in Missouri, a place called uh, Columbia. You know what that is? Yeah, yeah, Columbia. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so about where Missou is and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how you got started boxing, bro? Right? Man, just. Um, I was like, one day I was like in the hood walking around out, and I this old guy was cleaning out his like garage, and I had um uh, I helped him clean out his garage. When I was helping him clean out his garage, he uh had an old pair, like two pair of old boxing gloves in there, and he said uh, I could have them for let you know for helping him clean out his garage, and I, I ever since then I had kept those boxing gloves in my book bag, and like I go around the neighborhood boxing people and stuff like. And I'd be knocking out grown men, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. I was, I was boxing grown men, everybody, like, and I was knocking out grown men, and like, I don't know, like, I had fell in love with boxing then, but I really wasn't boxing. I wasn't really serious though, you know what I'm saying? So, this was in Missouri. This was in St. Louis, Missouri, yeah. And I wasn't really serious, but I used to box my one of my boys named Lamont, and he used to beat me up every time, you know what I'm saying? Like in the gloves. But I keep on trying, though. I used to be like, I'm going to do it again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. After a while, he eventually told me that he boxed. Like, that he boxed at a gym or whatever. <laughs> and he took me to the gym with him, and, like, I fell in love with it every since, you know? So, yeah. St. Louis is a, St. Louis a big boxing town, though, or, or used to be. Oh, yeah, it's coming back, though. It's coming back, though. That, uh, ain't that where Spanx and them from? Mike Spanx and Leon Spanx? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alexander. And the, uh, I want to say the ringside tournament was up there. Yeah, Missouri's a boxing place, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you started going to the gym around what age, bro? Like fifteen. I was like fifteen years old, and I stopped at like seventeen and a half. I stopped and went to college because I had a track scholarship to Grand ah. State. But within that, within that, like two and a half, three years, I had one hundred and twenty fights. Maybe like 110. I had like like I had like five to eight more fights in college when I wasn't really training for real. But yeah, I had like 110 fights within that um that three year period. I huh. had a lot of fights. I was fighting every week, twice a week, sometimes at little local tournaments. Like I was, you know what I'm saying? I was fighting a lot. 
whenever they had fights. You I the had the same people like two times, like three times. You know what I'm saying? I was taking whatever I could. What uh? At what age you went pro, man? Uh, I went pro right after college. I think I was like, like 22. Was you up there or here? Uh, I was here. I was in St. Louis. I went. I actually went pro in California. I moved to Salinas, California, and started training with Garcia Boxing. I, I got back into boxing after college. After I, I was working as a like a security guard and substitute teacher, and I got back into boxing after I lost my cousin Preston Freeman. Like my cousin's name was Little Man. He got killed at a nightclub. I mean, he used to box. And he was pro. He was real good. But he ended up getting murdered or whatever. So I ended up getting back into boxing. You know, that motivated me to get back into boxing. And I went pro with the people that he went pro with out in California. That was uh, Salinas, California with Garcia Boxing. So I didn't know anything about this family. I didn't know nothing. Like well, Robert, put the word, we talking know, about Robert Garcia there? Yeah. No, no, no. Garcia, Max Garcia. And they know Robert Garcia. I was out there with Robert Garcia and them too. But oh, okay. I didn't know anything about these people. You know what I'm saying? They, I had just moved into a townhouse and everything. They called me. It was like, yo, you want to go pro? Want to move to uh, Cali and go pro? And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't know what the – I was just, like, kind of shocked because I'm like, dude, I just moved into a townhouse and all that. I just signed a lease. I just bought right. all this furniture. And I had, I had told him I needed to think about it. But then I was at work that same night, and I was, like, wrestling the site patient. And I was like – and I'm about to go to Cali, man. Like, you know, pursue my dreams. You know what I'm saying? So right. I called him back and was like, I, I, I want to come out there. And they flew me out literally like two days later. So I had to like sit, like give away all my furniture, sell all my stuff, like try, within like two you, days. Like, you ain't had people out there, man? I had my, my family, my mom and all of them. That was, oh, they, oh, they, they in Salinas? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know nobody out there from a can of paint. I didn't even know the family that invited me to come out. I just know my cousin used to fight for them. But I'm like, you know what? They offered <laughs> to fly me out and everything, first class, two days. Like, I had two days to get rid of all my stuff, and I broke my lease and everything. Time to go. They flew me out to Salinas, and I stayed with a family that I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In this room with another fighter. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just going with it. Like, they flew me out, like... I'm doing whatever it takes, you know what I'm saying? The boxing business, yeah. They look at yeah. fight. It, it was, bro, it was kind of like, it was kind of like slavery out there, bro. We was locked in the room, bro. I think it was kind of like slavery out there, bro. Like we was locked in the room. Like oh, the gym was in the house. Like couldn't really go nowhere, bro. It was crazy, bro. Like Just for a, real. Like a boot camp, like a boxing, uh, like a boxing boot camp with this family I ain't even know. And I'm a grown man. And I'm locked, and I can't go nowhere. Like. You know what I'm saying? That was wild. How long you stayed out there? A year. I was out there for a year. They paid me every week or whatever. They paid me good, but it was just, man, it was like, 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 like being like a boxing slave, bro. Like for real. Like no, and I don't no like kind of life. life. I got two kids, man. I don't want to live like I'm a kid. Forget that. <laughs> so you stayed a year, and then where you ended up after that? I bounced, man. I bounced out after a year. You know why? I left because the dude who was in the room with me, the roommate, he was acting like he was cool, bro. And my, my cousin always wanted to tell me something about what went on out there, and he never got a chance to tell me. Right. But the roommate, the roommate was, like, acting like he was cool. I used to, he used to sneak out the window, and I used to, like, be like, man, I, I got your back, bro. Like, go right, right. Do you, what you, you know do. What like, for real, because I used to sneak out the store to go get food. I used to sneak out the window to go get food. And, and man, that's go. crazy, bro. That is crazy, man. Yeah, crazy, right? So that happened. And the same dude that was acting like he was my boy or acting like I was cool was going back telling them everything about me wanting to leave because I was like, man, I just feel like I'm too trapped down here. He went back and told them everything. They sent me back home, bro, with no bread or nothing, dog. Like, I was broke. I was broke. They sent me back to the crib, bro. You had a... You was you was bugging with a CI. <laughs> he was reporting everything. <laughs> he was reporting everything, but I was like, I was looking out for him though, man. That's crazy. Right. Though, you know what I'm saying? That's how they that's how they live, man. Them snitches. That's how they live. Hey, but come to find out though, I'm still undefeated. He he didn't lost some fights. He ain't doing, you know what I'm saying? He ain't doing nothing. Like, you feel me? Like, come on, man, stop hating, bro. Hey, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, if you got God by your side, you're gonna be good. You know what I mean? Don't like, nothing yeah. good to come from evil, man. Nothing. For real. You uh so when you left there, you went back to Missouri? 
I went back to St. Louis. And when I went back to St. Louis, man, I had to work again. I was living with my mama on her couch. And I was sleeping from crib to crib, man. I ain't really had no crib, you know what I'm saying? And, like, what did I do? I, I think I – oh, I started – I was training. And I became, I um got back into security and stuff. I was training. But I was still trying to fight, though, because I was 4-0 and when I went back. You feel right. Me? So I had – I got an uncle. His name Richard. And he always be like – he was always like helping me try to look for places to go and trainers and stuff. And he reached out to Ronnie Shields and sent him some film. And he was like, after a, after eight months, almost nine months of being in the loop, he was like, man, dude, you can come to Dallas. You can stay with me. And we'll go back and forth to Houston and try to get this coach, you know, Ronnie Shields. Right. So Ronnie Shields invited us out. I went to Dallas and stayed with my uncle. And my girls, I left my girls, my daughters and stuff back home. So I went to St. Louis. I mean, I went to Dallas, and we used to drive from Dallas all the way to Houston, like right. just to go, just to go train. You know what I'm saying? Then we come back to Dallas, and we was just waiting on the answer. If he wanted us, he wanted us, but we couldn't just. I couldn't just move to Houston. I had to wait to Al Heyman sign me, so I could get that little, like a little bit of a signing bonus up front, just to push. Him, you know, so I could be able to live. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I had nothing. So we waited all summer, like almost all summer. And then eventually he ended up signing me and sent me the contract finally. And I was like, man, I ain't even really, like, to be honest with you, I ain't even really had time to look over the contract. Like, because I, I, I mean, because I didn't have time, man. I'm like, I was, I was, I'm like, I, I ain't had no job. I was homeless, bro. I'm like, yo, man, I don't care what it is, man. Like, and I was doing all that because I want, I didn't have a lawyer. I couldn't afford all of that. So I'm like, man, it's Al Heyman, bro. To sign the contract, bro. Like, I need to get up out of here, dog. Like, for real. Signed it. Gave me a little signing bonus up front. I only had, I think I had, like, I had, like, two bags of clothes. And I think I had, like, after everything was all over with, I moved to Houston with, like, like $2,500, $3,000 in my pocket, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, lived, I had to move to the hood or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I had to right. find somebody to accept me because I only had, like, 24 hours to make that move. You feel me? Right. But I moved, I moved out here. Got with Ronnie, was training with Ronnie, man. Everything was going good, man. I, shoot. Hey, it was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? It was a struggle in the beginning. But, like, man, it was, man, it was so much of a struggle, man. It was times that I wanted to go back, like, to the crib. I ain't really never – I ain't never wanted to go back. It was just that I was forced into situations I might have had to go back, back to the crib because I couldn't survive. You know what I'm saying? I had no help out here because I don't have a lot of family out here or whatever. But, uh, like, I survived. You know what I'm saying? I kept pushing. I kept fighting. And I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm so you, there. so who who introduced you to? You say it was your uncle. Who introduced you to even touch uh Al and them? Was it through Ronnie? It was oh. through Ronnie Shields. It was through. Ronnie oh, Shields. so by, by coming out here trying to plug up with him, you yeah. end up plugging up with them. Yeah, yeah. And Ronnie Shields helped me get with Al Heyman for sure. Uh, but you at Main now? Huh? I'm at Main Street now. With uh, with Aaron. With Aaron Navarro's, yeah. Yeah. So, so, what, how many fights you had with Ronnie? Y'all had fights? Me and Ronnie, we had what? what, what uh, me and Ronnie, we had about five fights. Mm -hmm. About five to six fights, yeah. What caused that uh, transition? Just looking for something? Was it as far as going to, to a different gym and a different training? You say what? That's my daughter. I said, what caused the transition for you to go to, go to Maine? Hold on. I'm about to go on the like that. God, leave. If I lose it, bro, I send another request. Hello. Yeah, how you how you looking up? My bad, man. My daughter, they blowing me up, man. Yeah, what's yeah. up? Yeah, where, where were we at though? Uh, I was saying, what caused the transition from uh Ronnie to going to Main Street? Yeah, uh, man. You know, it's just it's fight, man. Sometimes, sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes coaches and trainers don't see eye to eye. And like Ronnie, a good trainer, man. One of 
if not one of the best trainers in the game. You know what I'm saying? I take my hat off to him every time I talk about Ronnie. You know what I'm saying? I pay him all the respect in the world. He's a good trainer. But like I said, it was just in the I was in a situation where I just wanted a little bit more attention. You know what I mean? I wanted a little bit more attention. It's my career. I wanted a little bit more attention. I wanted a little bit more one on one. You feel me? Like so I can grow as a fighter as well. I you know what I'm saying? Because he got a lot of fighters, man. He got that happens. Yeah, I wasn't trying to get no dirt. That happens all the time. You yeah. gotta go to a place that fits that that fits better or whatnot. So the 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 relationship is everything, man. And if 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 if, uh, if a fighter feels like if a fighter feels like he ain't getting the right attention, it's the train man. If a trainer feels like he ain't getting the right uh, output by a fighter, you know it just ain't working, whatever. But uh, so you ended up at Maine, and, and how long have you been with Aaron and now? Man, I've been with Aaron for over a year now. Like, I mean, maybe maybe like good. two years, maybe like two years. I know uh, I know Bobby real well, and I've been around Aaron. For 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 a long time, we don't know each other that well. But what I do know of, uh, good dude, great trainer. Yeah, he's stuff. solid. He's solid. Yeah. He's solid. So, uh, so how many? So so you had four in California. You had five with Ronnie. That's about nine fights. Uh, and now what? What you sitting at now? I might have had. I might have had like six with Ronnie, maybe six or seven. And so now the last. Five, maybe? Been with uh, Aaron and them, huh? Yeah, yeah. And you're looking good, bro. I caught you I caught you training in there a little bit. I'm looking, I, I look at everything, even when you think I ain't looking. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I be, in my own, I be in my own zone, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, I go to the gym to work, and that's it, man. Like, then I'm out, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm on a mission, man. I, I, I got a family to feed, bro. I got two kids. I got, shit, uh, three now, you know what I'm saying? But still, right. though, like, I'm on a mission, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just trying to get it. You feel me? Like yeah, yeah. Oh. absolutely. It seemed like uh, uh, things going good, man. You know the fight business is so. It's like a uh, stardom, man. It's like you go from nothing to something if you go to be something. It's tough. You know what I'm saying? It's, so it's tough. I just happen to be one of them lucky fighters that slipped through the hole. You feel me? That's it, man. You got to still making it, still managing. So I'm thankful for that. You know. You gotta create. You gotta create. You gotta create buzz until somebody else uh, hops along. You know. So, so, what's the deal with uh the twins, man? You 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 been working with them, or was this something? Uh, this main event was something they reached out. Was it through Al? Say put, you know, let's put Darwin main event or what? I mean, look, they, the, the, I didn't even know they was throwing the show to like they reached out to me. You know what I'm saying, like. We want you to fight on the car, you know what I mean? Right. And I was like, all right, that's cool. And it was supposed to be somebody else's the main event, but then they ended up making me main event because Al wanted to make me main event or Brad, one of them, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm thankful for that. And uh, I don't know. I mean, like, we, we've been talking about this stuff here and there, me and the twins. But you know me, man. I'm from the show me state. You feel me? <laughs> hey, I can yeah. come across so many people that just talk. Not saying that they're just talking, but bro, in this game, it's a lot of talkers, bro. When they come to business and making stuff happen, bro, it's a lot it's of more, talkers, man. It's more talkers than not, right? It's a lot more talkers than people that's like making stuff happen, bro. You know how many sponsors I had bad on me? I got sponsors that I've been I've been reaching out to for four years straight, four right. years straight every fight. Like, man, come on, please sponsor me, dog. Like, four years straight, bro. People I've been asking to back me up, man. Like, and that still haven't backed me up, bro. They say they're gonna back me up. Wait they until got the money to back me up, but just never get, never, never. Like, it's a lot of people that don't believe in me that don't don't support me or whatever. But when I win, they like, hey, what's up? What? Yeah. Well, look here, man. When Darwin, when Darwin Price does it, watch how many is gonna be ready to get in the Darwin Price business. For sure. And that's gonna be then that's gonna be your uh, job and your team's job to navigate through that bullshit because, yeah. uh, like you said, for four years you talking about say man let's get down and they won't get down after you done did stuff. Yeah. And maybe that's maybe that's why it's business on their part. But just remember when you want to get in the dog with price business once it's made, 
It's gonna cost you. That's all. <laughs> it's gonna cost you. Yeah. Anybody you you don't run nobody else, right. man. Cause hey, I be man, I, I be I be like like I've been chasing after my own sponsors and everything for a long time, man. I got them. You know what I'm saying? I got right. them on my own and everything. But it just be a lot of games too, man. When it comes to this stuff and people supporting you, man, and people like trying to play you. You know what I'm saying? Like a thousand percent, man. That's why. I, that's why it's imperative to have that relationship, like you said. You you, you wanted some attention, so you went find a spot where it was most comfortable. Because yeah. because when the dollars and cents start coming, uh, you feel comfortable with giving everybody just what they deserve. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You know that you know this guy deserves it. You know what I'm saying? And everybody who plays a role in your in your success, man. The biggest thing I see about you, bro, uh, looking at clips, bro, watching you in action with the press conference, like, was was most valuable in this business. Uh, fan friendly, bro. A fan friendly fight, you know, willing to to, and that ain't that ain't me taking nothing from uh, your boxing intelligence. I'm just saying, when you in there and you willing to uh, dig and fight. You know that's what that's what brings the outside the boxing the boxing nerves. It brings that business in. You see what I'm saying? For sure. Like, like folk. Uh, that's why what Lil Floyd did was a miracle to become popular, but be an educated boxer. That don't never happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to you got to sell them on something. So when the fans, when the when the people outside of the uh, uh, the diehard boxing people, they want to see. A fight. You see what I'm saying? That's why you can make it at all levels. So when you're a fan friendly fighter who also knows how to protect himself in there, man, that's marketable, bro. So it's just the right eye seeing you, man. And the right people seeing you, bro. And then you keeping that team tight, man. My last <laughs> fight should have been televised, but man, I always get screwed over with the good like my fights being televised sometimes. Like it's supposed to be televised. But it ain't it ain't Al Heyman' fault. It'd be like something that just go on that hap that happened to happen that I didn't get aired on TV because of the time that's or something boxing. like that. That's boxing, man. We, man we, but it'd be like it'd be like important fights that's supposed to be on TV for me, man, to give me that pub, bro. That can really you know catapult my career, man. It's like it's, always it's always a roadblock, though, you know. Bro, people people outside of this business have no have no clue about. How it, how it works, uh, the right moves. You know, the, the average fan looks at boxing similar to their favorite sports team, right? Yeah. If they, if you're a fan, if, if, you know, me being from New Orleans, we Saints diehards, right? Well, the average, the average boxing fan is like a Saints diehard. He don't really know you got baby mama drama, coaching yeah. drama, Bill drama. He don't know what a swing bout is. He don't yeah. know that you was all ready to go. You had started warming up at 5 o'clock because you were sweating. And then you ended up having to stay warm to 10 o'clock after the broadcast was over. Now you go fight. Yeah, so yeah. don't know that shit. And don't know that you going to fight at 10 o'clock when you was hoping you fight at this 7 o'clock position and this great fight gets seen by millions of people. So you, hey, so you elevate. They don't know I'm that. Always, right? I'm always turning down, turning down swing bouts. Do not put me on no swing bout because I'm not waiting to no one in the morning to fight, bro. Like you, straight up. You trying to get on the two? You trying to get like, on the two? Even though I want to be on TV, but I used to be want to be on TV. I'm like, no. I'm just trying to win right now because right now I ain't, I ain't even there yet. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's and that's and that's important. Understanding that, right? Because yeah. if you got a bunch of stress on you trying to get on this tube before you're supposed to be there, then you get in there with a with a with a guy you're supposed to beat, but it's just so happy y'all styles match yeah. up where he's rough. Yeah, I just wait till my time. I just wait. I say everybody, you know what, man, my time's gonna come. Everybody yeah. got their moment, everybody got their time in life. You know what I'm saying? Stay and safe. I keep doing what I'm supposed to do, keep doing right by people, dog. I know my time's gonna come. You know what I'm saying? Right. Stay, Stay in shape, shape, be fight ready at all times. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So who's uh, are you average your trainer management? Is it Al Heyman management or yeah, Al Heyman my manager? Which I know is he, 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 they call it uh, 
What did he say he is? What? Advisor. Huh? Yeah, advisor. Yeah, yeah, advisor yeah, yeah. what to do. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah. lines up the fights for you. Uh, Y'all get him ready and knock him down, man. When, 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 you, when you're presuming the fight again, bro? Man, hopefully in December, either January, man. You know, I'm trying to fight soon. So I, I just, I, like I said, I got to holler at my team. Got to holler at Alan Hammond and them and see what's next for me. You know what I mean? Right now, I'm just staying in the gym and staying fit right now. And that's it. I'm making it a lifestyle. Uh, tell me about tell me about preparing for Prescott, man, and uh, how you grade your performance, bro. How many, how how long was camp? Man, I'm always in camp. I'm always in camp. Like I mean, not hardcore camp, but I'm always right. in camp though, all year round. Like I mean, it ain't no, it ain't no, ain't no camp for me. But sparring wise, I start sparring like eight weeks out, seven weeks out. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I'm always training. I'm always in camp. How, how was your spar for this one, bro? It was good. I had some good spar. You know what I'm saying? I felt like it's a lot of stuff I could. Every man, I'm my biggest critic. I can always get better. I know you should how be. good I am. I know how how better I can get. I know I ain't I ain't the best in the world just yet. You know what I'm saying? Until I get there, but I always know I got. You know what I'm saying? I got. You know, stuff to work on. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like that was a good fight for me, but I felt like. I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I needed to do, but it was a lot of stuff that I could have worked on as well as being a little bit more sharper. You know what I'm saying? But, what um, was that? Uh, what you mean? That that fight was scheduled for 10? What was it scheduled for? Scheduled for 10. But I, I mean, are... I, I was in shape. I don't get tired. Like, you would never, you would never, you would never see D Price fighting out of shape. Never. And I'm standing on that. You know what I'm saying? Ready to go. I ain't going to never come to the ring out of shape. Like, just know anybody I fight, they're going to have a problem. They're going to have to, like, come with it because I ain't going to never be out of shape. You feel me? And there ain't going to be no walkover, none of that. If they ever, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that's what, I mean, to be honest with you, I only watched, I only watched the video on Prescott, like, one time. I, I never, right. I, I really never really watched my opponents like that because you never know what to expect. I just spar different people and I spar different fighters and I spar Southpaws. I spar Orthodox people. I spar Bigger people, little people, I swear, every kind of style so I can learn how to make adjustments quick. You know what I'm saying? Like For whatever he there, brings in there. Huh? For whatever he uh, brings in there, you want to be prepared. Yeah, you might get somebody to come in there and try to knock your head off, bro. I'm ready for it. I'm ready right. for it. You know what? I can stay relaxed. I can think quick. I don't get angry. You know what I'm saying? I I know how to play. I know how to, I know how to box and I know how to relax and I know how to think fast. You know what I mean? So right. I know how to make quick adjustments. It's all about knowing how to make adjustments in boxing. Absolutely. Because you never know how somebody's going to come out. Absolutely, man. You never know. You can't, you can't. I don't like watching film too much because then you start thinking, I got to do this. This how you do. This how you come in. You get too adapted to that style. What if that right. guy come in with a whole other different plan, game plan? Well, I'll tell you, man, point. That that's why I tend to, you know, you want a purpose. You want a purpose in that first round, but also you want to be downloaded so you can see what they present. And like you said, by the fly, by the fly, you got to be able to adjust, man. Because he today, today he might feel like fight, and maybe yeah. you watch the wrong take. You know what I'm saying? So you're I right. At, I just look at all their weaknesses. Right, right, and, and try to uh, and try to uh, pull pull a move on their ass. What, yeah. what? So being your harsh critic, man. As you should be. Don't say yourself bullshit. There's enough people selling you bullshit. Well, how would you grade your performance, man? Um, for the last fight? For this last fight. Out of ten? Yeah. I say about a seven. About a seven. You uh man, you took care of business, man, from what I was saying, bro. So that's a good thing, man. You always know you can do better and be sharp or whatever, I'm sure. But uh you was pretty dominant, bro, in what I seen of the fight. I appreciate uh, you, man. Yeah, man. So, and also living that box and living that box in life. Yeah, I, I agree with that too, man. A lot of boys, I think, be taking time off their career with all that uh, turning turning camp into a weight loss program. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so living that and just sharpening up prior to the fight, man. That's how. That's I think the most successful fighters do that. You know. That's a, which, 
which takes uh, uh, discipline, you know, because everybody can't do it, man. They just show up on oh, fight. It's tough, man. It's tough. Shoot, I just had some. I just had a fried seafood platter last night, so I got to go to the gym today. <laughs> got to go uh, work it all, bro. Got to go so work tough. Eat that boring grilled chicken. It's tough, man, you know? So. Well, I, I tell you what, bro, I'm going to try to – uh. I want to keep up with your man on this thing, bro. And whenever your fights come on, of course, we're going to share it and promote it and all that stuff, man. I appreciate you, man, for real. And I appreciate you taking the time out to even interview me and talk to me. Yeah, man. We go, we go, we can go live whenever you got something coming up. You know, making sure, sure. People, know, making sure people know what's happening. Because I know you fight out of town. You fight here. You fight wherever they tell you. Yeah, yeah I fight wherever, whatever call they make or whoever they put in front of me. I say, like, what's up? I don't never even got a second guess. I'll be like, just make it happen. You know? Absolutely, bro. Uh, I'm going to message you too, man. Get your number locked in, bro. Uh, All right. For sure. Give a. Uh, Give your people a shout-out, man, where they can follow you and all that on Facebook. and, and Hey, I man, follow me on Facebook at Darwin Price Jr. I got a fan page at Darwin Pay the Price Jr. And y'all can follow me on IG at Darwin Price Jr. Same for Twitter. And I appreciate all my supporters, man. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? This won't be possible without God, and this won't be possible without y'all. So I appreciate all of y'all for the support. You know what I'm saying? Support Absolutely, me lot, man. You know we support you. My, and, and my kid, uh, he say you got some of the best fun he ever gets. So that's why he wants to be over there, you know. Uh, already, already. Between you and uh uh that Marquise kid too, they go at it too. Oh so, yeah, uh, for sure, for sure. It's always high class sparring over there where you at though. That's the hub right there, man. Oh yeah, some dogs over there, some killers over there. You coming up, you better be prepared to work. Cause I ain't putting it at work though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then the herd right quick. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna check in with you later, man. And when you got the next fight, we go uh promote it and, and do another call or something, man. All right, for sure. I appreciate you, man. All right, D. All right, man. Take care. All right. All right.